What's up, guys? This is episode four of No Croissant. I'm your host, Chris Condi, and this is... Hello, I'm David Scrivani, uh, host of Talking Toku. Yep, and uh, Nick Cooper, the host of uh, Visionary Dawn podcast. And we are introducing our special guest, Jonathan Shaivkovsky. Hi. How are you guys? <laughs> doing pretty um, good, Jonathan. Doing pretty good. We're doing just good now that you're finally here. Uh, we're recording live having, from Boston. Um, Jonathan is out here in Canada, though. I'm having deja vu. I'm getting the feeling I've been here before. That would be because of Nick. Of course. <laughs> Previously, Nick already interviewed Jonathan Shapkowski on his uh, podcast, Visionary Dawn. More like an interrogation. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Where were you on the night of? <laughs> All right, we did go into some uh, secrets, but we'll save it for later. <laughs> of course. It, it was secretly a hit piece the entire time. We're actually making an entire Jonathan anti-documentary. I see. So so not, I, I would have to get Jonathan on Talking Toku next is, is, is the next yes. step here. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sure. So well, things, next... things, things come in threes. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> yes. We, we have to complete the trilogy. <laughs> Yeah, this, this, the, this is the, the, what's it, the trifecta or the tripod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like the Avengers Infinity War of the uh, did, did Jonathan Tchaikovsky universe. Did you guys see that movie, The Girl Next Door, with uh, Alicia? Was it uh, Alicia Cuthbert? Is that? Did you guys not see that film? Uh, no, no, I, no, I did not. I only no. watched. Oh my god, <laughs> it, it, it's hysterical and brilliant. But because it, it, you ha you have to see it without me ruining it for you. I mean, mm -hmm. it came out how many years ago? It's got to be like 12 or 14 years ago, but it's it's a definite rental. The only movie I've ever seen is Godzilla in 1998. I was going to make that joke, Chris. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jonathan Tchaikovsky might, may not be a household name, especially in the Godzilla fandom, but if you've been collecting, especially uh, within the Facebook Godzilla community, you, you, you've you definitely heard the name around. Or perhaps if you're a fan of Monster Island Buddies, he's his name's popped up on the show plenty of times. Uh, Jonathan is a cartoonist who formerly worked on shows such as Arthur, Animal Crackers, and Flight Squad. Um, and oh, you, you can't forget Caillou. My God, I wish I could forget Caillou. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, Jonathan, what do you, what do you think of that bald bastard? <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's. I've heard horrible things in the sense that you know he's like Charlie Brown with cancer or something like that. It, it's that's not nice. Uh, I'm not promoting that, but um, I I remember that. I, geez, I worked on Caillou and Arthur for like three and a half years. <laughs> and you and were I, I was I was in therapy for much longer than that <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Caillou and Arthur are, are two shows I grew up with as a kid. I, I, Frankly, I don't remember Animal Crackers or Flight Squad, but Arthur... Animal Crackers was based on a comic strip that's been around for decades. Oh, man. Well, unfortunately, I don't know how to read. So <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't right. have known that. Um, I, th I, I see that dictionary beside you now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it was... Was there a question in there somewhere or... Oh, no, it... we're, we're just, uh, you know, we're just... We're introducing our esteemed yeah, guest, is all. Of course, you know people. People at home, don't, they don't know the Jonathan. You guys are yet. just ribbing me yet. So. Exactly. Yeah, of course. Um, Jonathan has actually been recognized by the Emmys for his contribution to Arthur. Well, yeah, I worked on I worked on the episode that won an Emmy. But hey, hey, we beat we beat out Disney at the time. Uh, it's a funny little placky thing on cardboard that I have. <laughs> I think you came across that on my website, right? Yeah, they couldn't even like put it like on a metal sheet or something, or did they frame it at least? Uh, did they? No. <laughs> the company that the company that I worked for at the time they're no longer oh in existence God. because the the um, the owners or whatever were caught in big scandals. So it was. I mean, I, I worked there for what five five plus years or so, and um, it was my well, actually it was my second. Second venture, I think, into an official animation studio. Right. Um, but, or actually, was it the first? I don't remember. It was a long time ago in, in my younger and more vulnerable years. Right. So, and, and back then, uh, I assume you guys probably animated by hand. Maybe it was like through animation cells. This was before digital, right? Yeah. But I, I mean, the, the, the animation wasn't happening in Canada, it was oh. being sent overseas. We were doing, uh, layout and design 
And oh. because I was I was laid off so many times, I called it. I I was a I said I was a layoff artist. <laughs> it's, it's, no, seriously, because it's like you're you're a layout and design artist. I said I was a layoff artist. Well, I feel it's, you it's, too. It's contract work. Con- yeah, it's 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 rough, man. But it was um it was an experience. Um, but uh, yeah, Caillou, and Arthur. Follow up question: Do you like Arthur? Um. No, <laughs> listen, listen, I mean, listen, apparently the, sto- the stories were great. I never saw the show, but uh, to be honest with you, I mean, did you know that he's an aardvark or Not you just thought he long... was like an I thought he was an glasses. anteater. What did you think he was? Anteater? Ant- no, he's I thought an he used to be an anteater. Well, an, an anteater would be an aardvark, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. They're, they're very... The, the irony is uh, Mark Brown, I believe, was the creator. Yeah, Correct. He, Arthur originally had... Um, like a longer snout. Right. They just so, kind of shaved it off and make him look like an egg with glasses. Yeah. So, this, so this is the Arthur podcast now. But I remember when I was a kid, I remember reading the first book, and he he had this like long, disgusting snout. Yeah. <laughs> and then they yeah. slowly made him more kid friendly yeah. as more I, books came I, out. I mean, did you see the series finale that recently came out, Jonathan? Oh, wasn't he like a blogger? I now? did not. Yeah. Oh, oh he's he a game did. dev. Is he? I, I think he's a game dev. I thought he made comics or something. Oh, that might be it. And then like he was like, and then it got revealed like the whole series was like his comic or something. Is that what it was? Yeah, oh. I don't know. It was like Arthur lore. I don't know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had fun working on Animal Crackers because I I even have some plushes of Eugene the elephant. He was he was the guy I always enjoyed um, drawing. And the funny thing is, I came fresh out of animation school, and at the time without sounding like I'm bragging, but that was supposed to be the best place in the world to learn classical animation. And they, they taught you or they really enforced in you. It has to be like the loose, you know, fluid Disney style and everything. So I had a scene of Eugene playing football and there was all these other elephants. So I had to draw, I think there was like 10 elephants or something like that. So I, I had Eugene on the bottom squashed like a pancake and every other elephant significantly as we got to the top would eventually take its original shape, right? So, cause you've got squash and stretch with that much weight on top of Eugene. So the director gets all pissed off at me and sends it back to me and said, that's not, th- that's not what we do here. I said, what are you asking? I said, you want all the elephants to be the same size. So they're going to look like a bunch of billiard balls, you know, pile. And that's what he wanted. And I said, okay. And I just mumbled to myself, but that's not funny anymore. <laughs> the way I drew it, I think was funny. And, and then I had to explain, well, listen, I just came out of school where they're, you know, ramming the Disney style down your face, but they're like, it's limited TV animation. I'm like, okay, have it your way. So that was, um, anyway, my, my aunt, you know, she, she came through for me and she, I have a big Eugene and a smaller Eugene uh, plushes, which uh-huh. they were not easy to get. So, but yeah, if if you Google Animal Crackers, I'm sure you'll come across uh, the comic strip. It's probably published somewhere in the world still. Um, <clears throat> but it was uh, no, I, I just I, I had a thing for Eugene. I just I, I got always really excited when I had to draw him because he had a lot of <laughs> personality, you know. So, yeah, that's how I felt when um when I, I don't know if any of you played Apex. I know Jonathan hasn't, but. That's a video game. I'm, I'm yeah, shaking my head. I, I never played Apex. Yeah, I got excited when I when I used to work on the Pathfinder stuff. Pathfinder is he's like this funny robot, but he's like he's also like an advanced killing machine, but he's super naive about it, and he's always like, "Oh, I love I love my friends." When referring to his squad, as he like. That sounds that sounds like a tool in Photoshop, though. I got to use the Pathfinder tool. <laughs> the only the only <laughs> character I know about in Apex is like the skeleton looking dude that everyone wants to fuck. Oh, Reaper. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> John. John. Did you say the skeleton the skeleton looking dude with the cape? Is that what you said? Uh, the skeleton dude that everyone wants to fuck. <laughs> oh God. Oh okay. Johnson's well, yeah, just that- really unaware about internet culture of the modern <laughs> day. I don't get out much. <laughs> That's okay. Neither do we. Yeah. Uh, believe me, we no, do not. Really. Um, so Jonathan, not only is he an animator, he's currently a drawing instructor for the next generation of artists. I teach the underlings how to draw cartoons properly in any school that'll have me. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. And, but you uh, know what? I, I mean, after working in, in uh, how many studios? I think I was in five or six studios. Uh, over an eight year stretch. And I was happy to leave because teaching the underlings, there's no judgment. You know oh, what I mean? Dude. It's, 
the amount of arguments you sometimes get in with the supervisors and stuff. Uh, oh, it's a terrible drawing. You draw it like this. I mean, I was in Montreal, so we were speaking French and whatever, and and they would whip something off, and I would copy it or whatever and hand it in, and it would get sent back saying that it needs to be revised. And I would go back to the supervisor who was just giving me shit, and I'd be like, you see, the director wants it the way I did it. <laughs> so it, it, it was really weird things like that. But, um, you know, it was a good experience for the most part. Um, and uh, it got a little bit dark. There was three deaths at the studio that I worked at during that time. And it was one of the guys was very, he was an absolutely brilliant artist. He ended up taking his life. Mm. Um, and I saw him the day before, cause he, I had lent him a VHS tape of, of some, what was it? Um, either the inspector Clouseau cartoon or Mr. Jaw, which was great as well. All part of the pink Panther uh, stuff. Right. And I remember I had another videotape for him. It was a Friday afternoon. And I said, Hey, do, you know, you want to borrow this one? He said, no, no, I'm okay. Thank you. And then like on Monday, when I went back into work, I had found out like Saturday, he went to a hotel, put a bag over his head. And I think he took pills. And I was like, Jesus Christ. God. He had no idea. And what really pissed me off is the owners, you know what they said? They didn't even know him. They just said, um, that's too bad, but we really didn't know him. And I thought to myself, you know what? This guy designed how many goddamn cartoon characters for you that filled your pockets and you couldn't even pick them out of a fucking lineup. That was intense. Probably, uh, you know, not really related to what we're discussing, but I just had a flash of that because the guy was, uh, he was a nice guy and I had no idea. You know, that was going to be the last time I, I spoke to him. Well, unfortunately, things things like uh, themes of depression are very common within artistic spaces, which is actually something I wanted to discuss about in another um, episode. Not of the Godzilla podcast, but I did want to do a podcast just about um, depression within the earth space. So it's super interesting to hear. You'd have to I mean, change that podcast to like thumbs up croissants instead of <laughs> croissants. <laughs> we do yeah. have croissants. And, you know, like we we're saying, though, like I have a huge respect for anyone that dedicates their life to teaching um, younger generations about the arts. Um, obviously, kids are our future, and art is also our future. So to set them on the right path, especially in a world where we have, like, fucking AI art now, <laughs> <laughs> to set them on that correct path towards success and, you know, I mean, they're going to live on now uh, with the knowledge they got from Jonathan Shaivkovsky and... <laughs> Keep inspiring well, hey, the even future generations as for that. So the, th the funny thing is, is I got into it with a couple of art teachers at some of the schools I was working at because they were basically teaching the kids wrong. You know, if you're drawing cartoon faces, they drew like the egg shape, and right. then they would draw straight lines like a big plus through the face. Oh, and I'd okay. say you don't do that. I said you, there, there's you can't hold a ruler to your eyes and your face is going to be perfectly lined up. Mm -hmm. right. Why are you teaching them that? I said draw round lines for the guidelines. And, the, you know, then it, it would become a little heated. I'm like, hey, you know what? It's your class. But I said, when, when the kids are going, like, I'm teaching them one way. And they're like, but the teacher told us to do this. And I'm like, secretly, don't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, I mean, to be secret, I'd like, don't tell them. I told you that. But, I mean, this is you can tell them you learned it in the cartooning class. Because, you know, when I was, um, to give you the broad overview, when I got into that program, it was at 1994. So 2000 people applied, 150 of us got in, 47 of us graduated. So that was, I mean, it's kind of terrifying numbers. And it was just like, I remember going to the first um, auditorium with all the kids. There was 150 of us. And, and the, the program director says, okay, look to your left. <laughs> Look to your right. Chances are in a few weeks they won't be here. I was just like, Jesus Christ. I'm biting God, my right. nails like something out of a Scooby-Doo cartoon, you know? <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, I, I was failing animation. I was failing life drawing. And I was failing painting. So I had to step it up uh, from, from three hours a week of the nude model drawing, life drawing. I was doing 12 hours a week. And I was doing extra painting classes. And I got, like, the highest mark in the last painting class. And, and I was doing, you know, 12 hours of naked drawing. Uh, with the models in front of you. And, and so that when I was drawing with my left hand, which I was told to, to, to help and all these little secrets and, and twists. I mean, that's how I got through the program. So I was one of the 47, which was, which was impressive enough, you know, 
So when I, I've got these other art teachers telling me, no, we draw the straight lines. I go, do you walk around with a ruler under your eyes? It doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, there, there's nothing, there's nothing flat on your face. I said, that's my, my goal is to get kids to see the difference from flat to three dimensional. Right. You know, that's why. Has what, form. What I, yeah. Yeah, and that's why when I'm drawing, I, I, I do those two examples. Like I drew, I draw the circle with the big plus sign, and I say, what does this look like to you? And every once in a while, some kid will get it right away and go, that's a pizza. I go, right. <laughs> then I do another drawing, and I make it look with the lines being round. I say, what does this look like? And they go, a basketball. I said, you've already learned, you know, this is the most important thing I can teach you. So it's, um, anyway, it's just a little thing that I, I, get, I get excited for the kids because if, if they get it, that's what you want to see. Right. Because I, I remember um, I became friendly with one of my old animation professors on Facebook and he had posted something about talking about when he was teaching. And I said to him, do you remember when we had to do that class on light study, shading or whatever? And I had like a, a Frankenstein um, laboratory and it was a cool camera angle and he wanted you to shade it with a light source and all that stuff. When I handed it in, he laughed in my face. And he passed me by like 0.5 of a mark. And I, 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 I started to cry because he was, the program was so intense. And I thought, how could you be that mean? Why don't you just explain to me what, you know, what's wrong with it instead of laughing in my face. And then I walk away with my tail between my legs. So I said to him, you know, I teach now myself and I teach younger kids. So there's no judgment. I said, but you know what? If a kid draws a straight line, and it's all like like a squiggly line. I tell them, "Did you do that? That's amazing." You always give the positivity instead of laughing at a kid, you know. Because I, I've 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 told kids, you know, what you did there is absolutely amazing. They get all excited to go to bring it to their locker, and then the kid comes running back in the class crying, and the paper's all ripped up. I said, "What happened?" And he goes, "Oh, the boy, the the, the guy in the, in in the in the hallway just ripped it up," and then I got to go and grab the kid yell at him and send him to the principal's office who had nothing to do with my class. I said, but you just shattered this kid's dream, you know? So I, listen, I was bullied terribly when I was younger. So when I see that stuff happening now, now I'll, I'll put my foot down or, you know, in the right place type of thing. But it, it's, so I, I, the, the teacher actually apologized to me. He said, you're right. I shouldn't have said that. So, you know, th this is what, what, what is that? We teach best that we most need to learn. Right. Makes a lot yeah. of sense if you think about it. Yeah, it really does. You know, I was just about to say, uh, right now I'm teaching my students how to do uh, self-portraits after they did their uh, Spider-Man and Batman drawings, and that was the same thing that I was teaching them was doing the rounded guidelines. So I knew exactly <laughs> what you were talking about when you mentioned it. I was like, oh, yeah, we're actually doing that right now. Cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to see some of those drawings, though. Yeah, the uh, the Batman one's already posted. Um, the, Are these your students or they're yours? They're my students. Okay, cool. Jonathan's going to judge your teaching ability, Nick. <laughs> you better well, be good. I'm, I'm new to the profession, so I, I need, uh, need good criticism. Well, I, I, I've been teaching, how many years is it now? Um, 13, 14, 15 years? 16? Going on 16 now? Yeah. So, but hey, you know, it's like I, I, I learn just as much from the kids, hopefully, as they do from me. So, we do got a few more Jonathan facts before we... Go straight into the toys. Is there um, a hashtag in front of it? <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe for more Ten Jonathan things facts. You didn't know. Well, yeah. Jonathan. Um, <laughs> so Jonathan's also a former model. Oh Jesus Christ! You're gonna bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's true. This is some obscure Jonathan lore that. Oh man, I got stories for you. But yeah, I, I did that. Now, I'll put in quotations, if you imagine my hands in the air, for like 22 years. <laughs> and I traveled, around, I traveled around the world doing that, and I saw a whole bunch of weird things and experiences and whatnot. Um, you know, went to New York and Miami and Spain and Milano and um, Boston. Actually, I was in Boston. There was oh, a great – cool. I, I got flown in to do a shoot – and then we, I got along so well with the photographer and his wife that they, they extended my trip and I had dinner with them. And then I flew home later on that night. Oh, I'm sorry you had to go to Boston. I'm not. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> you say, you're say saying that, that as someone who doesn't live in Boston, though. Uh, okay. Well, you know, you guys think, well, Canada's great, but I mean, it's so goddamn expensive here. 
Oh man, yeah. Tell us about it. <laughs> well, no, you, I mean, like when I see the like the houses and stuff in the states, and then I see that I mean, forget about like you know Mark Wahlberg or those type of houses that he's got like an entire you know block that he owns or something. But you know, some of the houses here, I can't the millions of dollars. I'm like, what? How is anybody going to afford that? You know, unless you're like Mark Wahlberg or something. But it's um. We'll, Anyways, we'll get rich off this podcast. Don't worry. I, I got yeah, I got an email, I got an email the other night saying that we reached uh, ten listeners. So oh, we're really moving up in the world. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, come on. I mean, uh, I'll spread the word. Oh, of course. I, I appreciate it. And, and yeah, I, I bet you I could get it up to twelve. There we <laughs> go. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, don't worry. We'll we'll make an order for some Chinese uh, streaming bots. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Get it trending. And then, uh, of course. Is there anything else you wanted to embarrass me with? Uh, no, don't worry, don't worry. Oh, well, actually, we did. I'm not. Want... Actually, I'm not no, I well, correct. actually, I'm not embarrassed. well, we I'm actually did want to mention that um, you have a beautiful family, a wife and a son, and five kitty cats. I do. Yeah, two kittens and and three older um, siblings. Not yeah, older. Nice. I mean, they're they're what? They're going to be four, I think, in March. Can you please tell us the names of your cats? Well, we have uh, Mr. B, which is the uh, short form for Barrington. We have Buster, and then we have Betty White. She's like a giant, fluffy white cat with a raccoon tail, so we call her the Missy for short. And then we have the uh, two new additions is Blaze and Bowie. Blaze is an absolute shit disturber, but you know what? We love him. Uh, he just he gets into everything, and you've never seen a cat move so fast. He he takes off. I mean, obviously he's you know uh, named properly because I've I've never seen a cat move so fast. Mm-hmm. And he can't stop, so he smashes into things. <laughs> and he, for example, yesterday um, I I had come in uh, from from teaching, and uh, I was taking out the trash, and I had a, a, a you know if you saw that episode of Seinfeld with the big salad. I had a big salad that was, uh, you know, chicken and stuff in it and bacon bits and some cheese, whatever, your basic salad. And I, I put it in, you know, the just the front of the, the house there, and I went outside to move the cars and take the trash out. Came back in the house five minutes later. There is salad everywhere, <laughs> and Blaze is in the bag, and I'm yelling. I'm just like, fuck, that's my dinner, you know? And, and, and so, so, so my wife comes, and, and, she, and she's yelling at him too, and he takes off, and you hear him smashing into things because it, it's like a pinball machine bouncing off everything, right? So then, um, like, I, I'm, what am I doing? I, I'm getting change or something like that, and I'm in the basement, just bringing my, my cartoon stuff, uh, my, you know, my teaching stuff down. And now I hear my wife yelling, you don't eat that. That's not your <laughs> dinner, you know? And he had taken, he, I had half a bagel, an organic bagel that, that um, I don't know if it came with the salad or whatever, but he was eating it through the saran wrap. Oh, my God. And she, and I was like, why is he always hungry? And then um, my wife was, was bathing our son. And I came downstairs for a second. This was now maybe like 930. And I hear a big bang. And I go running up the stairs. I just look. I go, who did that? And Blaze, like he's he's under the couch, right? And I see he had knocked off the whole tray of cat grass that was just starting to grow. So there was like cat grass all over the floor, like the seats. And I I mean, it's funny, but it's not. You know, like I love him to death because he gives you these really derpy looks. Um, but then he's just got like, he, I mean, I've showed his, fo- you've seen his photo, Chris, so you know how mischievous he looks, right? And, and he, I mean, he's, he's a perfect, um, like we lost, uh, Banbury in August, uh, three years old to heart disease, which was absolutely horrific. And Banbury brought the ruckus to all the other cats. They were all like Banbury and Mr. B and Buster and, and the Missy. They're all like from the same litter. So Blaze is like 85, 87% exactly like Banbury, almost even in looks, except Banbury had a big white belly. And uh, like Blaze has no fear. He attacks all the other cats. <laughs> he, he just wants to play. He wants to play. And he's like half the size, right, right now. Right. And he brings the ruckus to everybody. And it's just, I mean, you should see, I mean, you could be in the kitchen making dinner, whatever, and then Bowie will take off, and then Blaze is running after him, and you think we have a circus in the house because of, like, all the steps running. They're running up and down the stairs. And it, it's like, I mean, they're they're so, you pick them up, they're like a wet towel. 
you put them down, it's like a radio controlled monster that just smashes <laughs> everything. And I've ne- I've never seen cats like that, you know. So it's oh it's always God. amusing because I know like my, when my son is asleep, and my wife and I are like maybe we're having some tea or whatever at like ten o'clock, and you hear the thumping. I'm like, do we have elephants upstairs? Like the, the the amount of like you know pressure from them running up and down the stairs, it's ridiculous. But it's uh, hey, you know they're happy. But uh, yeah. Oh, and then they. I, I mean, I've caught them chewing on some of my prototype fingers. Oh my god, uh, Godzilla! So I, I actually I had to. I've got towels tied around all the like the, the toys that are on the floor. Oh my god! So, this makes uh, me want. This makes me want to draw a cat parody of the podcast, but it has like a cat holding like a prototype. It's nibbling on. So it's please do, proto. Nick. Please do. <laughs> like, oh my god! That would be great. I think that's the first time you even mentioned the toys this episode. Honestly, yeah, I think it is. That's that's why I'm here. Yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll dive right into it now that we uh. Now that no, we know Jonathan. so much about the cats and we we have we have all the Jonathan lore covered. Yeah, we have the the Jonathan lore complete. <laughs> okay, so the reason why Jonathan's with us today, now that we're twenty six minutes in, um, Jonathan <laughs> has been collecting prototype toys for years. Is over, favorite, over twenty. Over twenty. Wow, my God. For so his favorite company to collect from is Trendmasters, which. As you know, had the Godzilla license in the 90s up until they unfortunately um, closed doors. So, Trendmasters had uh, made quite a variety of Godzilla toys. They weren't the only uh, licensee at the time, but they made toys for like the general Toho stuff, like Godzilla. They had, you know, they had the Yamagras, not the Megalons, Mecha Godzillas, Ghidorahs. But when the 1998 movie rolled around, they got that license and they made movies. They made shit. They made toys for that film as well. Um, not only that. Well, but, they also made those movies for the commercials, right? I mean, you've got yeah, the. Right. Those oh, are cool. yeah. So, and of course, they made those cool ads. Um, Trendmasters had other toys planned before they closed shop. Um, they were going to release an entire second year set of Godzilla 98 toys. Uh, and then they're, of course, going to make toys for Godzilla, the series that went completely unreleased. And Jonathan right here is one of the very few people that has the luxury of owning some of those toys, or at least the prototypes. I, I, I don't know if I, yeah, I, I think I, I jumped into the collecting at exactly the right time because I know it was shortly after Trendmasters closed and there was a flood of their prototypes on eBay and not, not necessarily just Godzilla, but there was a lot of Godzilla. And as I think I had mentioned with monster Island buddies, um, it's over a year ago now. Yeah. Because I, I, I didn't know that, that trend masters had done like Mars attacks. And I mean, I knew they did the iron giant, but there was, I, I mean, I, I remember seeing whew, if it was at least 10 or 12 plushes, the unproduced Godzilla King of the monsters plushes from 93 that were being sold off. And I had lost out on the burgundy Rodan and the bright red Rodan. And I was so pissed off about that. Cause I remember having a bidding war against the guy who won and it closed at $67. The, um, was that the red one or the burgundy one? I don't remember. I think it was the burgundy one. And ironically enough, um, what is it? Four, 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 probably four or five years ago. Um, there was a guy that came into the group and I had posted a photo of the, of the plushes that I had. And he says, Oh, I've, I've got some of those. And I just said, Hey, any chance you happen to have the red Rodan or the, the burgundy Rodan? And then he's like, you mean this? And I was like, Oh, <laughs> so he had them, you know? And, and I was like, Holy shit. I said, so you're, you're the son of a bitch that I was bidding against. <laughs> <on eBay." laughs> you know? I was just like, how dare you? So, and we started talking, and you're going to laugh, but because uh, I'm laughing about it still. I said, do you want to, would you be willing to sell them? He said, well, maybe sell them, maybe trade. He says, what else have you got? And I said, well, what else do you collect? And he says, well, I like the minions. I go, you like the minions? I said, well, I got a minion prototype for you that, I mean, looks like a, it was a giant, um, like, stress toy that was uh, like eight inches, and it was a vampire minion. And it was so well made that it kind of conflicted with the toy releases. So they, 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 they wouldn't put it into production and it was a promotional thing. 
from this company called RDP. So we did a trade. I, I gave him the, uh, that uh, vampire minion plush, or sorry, not a plush, like the stress toy, and I gave him some money, and those, both those Rodans flew home to me. <laughs> so I was like, you know, that's, that to me is, is those remarkable stories when you lose out on something and you're like, oh! and then all of a sudden a couple <laughs> of years later, it's like you've got the little like woodpecker at your door and you open it up and, and they've come home. Yeah. So that was, that was pretty amazing. Um, and what was the original question? <laughs> I don't know. I think we've I all there, lost track. I don't think there was a question. We're just okay, introducing so, into the... Uh, right. So we also wanted to clarify, Jonathan isn't really a Godzilla fan necessarily. I mean, I'm sure you have appreciation for... Oh, yeah. Movies. I like I like Godzilla, but I mean, listen, I, when I see these Godzilla groups, I mean, they have the people that have everything, like Godzilla toilet paper and wallpaper <laughs> and cups and toothbrushes. You know, that's amazing. But I, I mean, I know there's so much merchandise out there for Godzilla. I'm not that guy. I, I, I love the Trendmasters prototypes because for me, all of their stuff had a lot of character. You know, uh, and so, look, some of the, the Playmate stuff that they came up with, I, I, I really like the mega punching um, Kong um, and, you know, some of the Godzilla stuff. I'm not a fan of um, Jax. I don't like Jax Pacific. Right. And and ironically, they're the ones that took over the Trendmasters, you know, licenses after, uh, but they've done absolutely nothing with them, mm -hmm. right? So that's not because people say, well, you know, when I, when they check out my videos on YouTube of the animated uh, Godzilla commercial, the series, you know, the the series commercial, or some from my own collection, they're like, oh yeah, could you get Trendmasters, you know, to start up and make these toys? And I'm like. No, I can't because they, they How closed. How much control like, over it do, they, do you, th yeah, do you I, think I, you have? Yeah, I do with that. You know, I mean, it's like oh. 21 years ago they closed, but I think these people don't even know. When is Trendmasters going to release these? And I'm like, you know, you, should, you might want to check out Google. <laughs> well, when I first heard of you back when I was like maybe 12 or something, I thought you had worked for Trendmasters with how much shit you had. <laughs> Honestly, I was of the same opinion. Yeah, as was I when I joined the group. <laughs> Well, I guess I could say that, but I don't lie. Uh, it's, it's ironic because, you know, my, my old profile said that I worked at Trendmasters, and I swear to God, I never put that there. there was, uh, somebody else did that, and I, I don't know how or whatever, but I, I couldn't even change it. You know, you, you, former employee at Trendmasters, I, I, never, I was never there. I, I said if I, if I was in the U.S. and I had graduated from, you know, the animation college or whatever – I'd probably come there and, and look for work so I could be drawing, you know, some character stuff there. I, I mean, real quick, how many Godzilla movies have you even seen? And more importantly, did you like Godzilla in 1998? Well, that's a bigger question. But, I, you know, I, in the 70s, um, you know, when I, when I was uh, whatever, how old, how old was I in the 70s? Um, I'd probably be, you know, 8, 9, 10 type of thing. There was WUAB. On Saturdays, they had Superhost, which was this kind of little bit heavy set guy. Little, I mean, like little, not not big or anything, but he had like a little, you know, like a, like a teddy bear, like a Winnie the Pooh type of body. And he wore a T-shirt and he had a cape, I think, and it, it was he was called the Superhost. And they would have the monster movies, and I remember always seeing Destroy All Monsters. So that mm -hmm. one, you know, stuck with me. I, I couldn't tell you the plot, of course, um, but the, the the thing is, is I I watched all those movies when they were coming out. And so that was that was exciting. I mean, I I remember, you know, on Saturdays when when things were cool and Bugs Bunny and all, you know, they had the what was it called the Bugs Bunny Scooby Doo Hour or something like that. And that's when growing up seemed to be a good time. Now everyone's looking at their fucking phones and video <laughs> games and all that bullshit. You know what I mean? So no, seriously, I mean it, it's you know, I, I, when I was teaching yesterday, I had this kid that you know he didn't have a phone. He had a calculator, and it's just like he kept disrupting the class. And I said, you know, because we were doing this thing called the cartoon face wheel, which is really interesting. It's three circles, and each circle has, like, once one of the circles is you draw eyes, another circle you draw noses, and another circle you draw mouths. And there's 14 spots on each one of these circles. And you rotate it, and you can make all these different faces. And I'm asking the kids, I said, okay, skill, skill testing question time. How many different faces do you think you can make with this? Who's, who's here good with math? I said, there's 14 spots on each circle and you've got three circles and they're like, some kids like 12. I'm like, yeah, no, how'd you get 12? That doesn't really work. Okay. 14. <laughs> uh, and then they go like 36. I said, okay, now you're guessing who's good at math here. So then I have to explain to them. It's like 14 <laughs> times 14 times 14, 
2,744 different faces. And they're like, get out. <laughs> I'm like, no, you get out. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's, you know, that, that, that's, that's what Basic it is. Basic so, multiplication. Anyway, this, this, yeah, this kid, he had a calculator, and he was, like, disrupting the whole class nonstop. And I kept thinking, it's like, is that a phone or is that a calculator? You know, it's like, get out. <laughs> so it was, um, that was a, just a little moment from yesterday's teaching. But, um, yeah, so uh, what was the question again? So, so does this mean that, you, uh, that you're a huge fan of Godzilla 1998? I'm not a huge fan. No, I mean, I don't mind it. I mean, God, there's there's such a a controversy about the stupid name, you know. <laughs> I, and I I've always said to people, listen, he could be called Barney the fucking dinosaur. I don't care, you know. It, it, it's you know, look at the DVD. It says Godzilla. It doesn't say Zilla. It doesn't say Gino or Gino, whatever the hell it is, right? It says Godzilla last time I checked. So if you can't deal I'm with that, on my drink. <laughs> yeah. So we had this whole discussion know, it, with it, Keith last week it, too. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that, that I mean, these are people that look like it's disrupting their entire lives. It can't be Godzilla. It's Godzilla in name only. Really? I was like, I don't even think that because you're having a problem with the name, right? So it's like, just relax, right? Mm. I mean, I'll just call him Barney. I mean, imagine <laughs> if he was purple. And then yeah. people would be bitching. That's not Barney. That's Godzilla. <laughs> so it's like make up your fucking mind. <laughs> oh you know, God. you know a story I forgot to tell uh, during the last episode, but it's perfect timing for this one. So one year when we were running the game tournament at G Fest, we got in a actual real Godzilla Sega '98 pinball. Oh. So it's the whole. Oh, I've seen that. That's cool. Yeah, and the on Saturday. Somebody left a note on the little pinball screen. Oh my god! Said, In name only. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, that's why I'm just, I'm just thinking. Wow. Of, yeah, wow. like people so are petty, bad, so like, fucking crazy petty in real life too. Like they'll like make sure it's done. Like no, it's only a name. It's name only. I'm sorry, but that's it, still is, funny as fuck. <laughs> is it like 25 or 27 years later? They're still 24. Yeah, this year's actually the 25th anniversary of the film. Well, what they should do is when they do a re-release, they need to put the name just to fill the whole DVD case or something. Oh, yeah. Godzilla. Sure. <laughs> oh, my God. So, of course, we already mentioned that Trend Masters, uh, they were like the main licensee. Um, but Galoob attempted to grab the license before, or I think around the well, same they, time. They were, they were competing, right? right? So... Uh, Galoob made three pretty outstanding um, sculptures. I guess they submitted. I have one of them. I actually had another one, but I, I got that from an ex Trendmasters employee who kept telling me it was a Trendmasters piece, but it wasn't. And I said, well, that looks totally different, right? Because it, it had a very realistic look to it. So I had heard that, um, like, the, the other piece I got from Galoob, uh, or from Galoob, I got from this guy who I think he, he had something, I don't know if he knew somebody from the movie or he actually did work on the film, but he had this, and I remember he found it in his storage and he showed it to me, and I was like, damn, that's pretty nice, it's impressive, you know? It, it's like 21 inches long, it's got like a super stiff, straight tail, so I don't like that, but I don't know... If, if you know that was probably just like the very first sculpt of it or something like that but it was very detailed and I, I had heard that it was done by you know like a movie sculptor not a toy sculptor oh. so uh, and I think I think it has the fifth finger which I don't know where somebody oh. got that wrong and the whole issue with adding an extra appendage so can but, we speak uh, about the fifth finger real quick we can okay so okay, everybody actually, hold up actually your finger. actually let's let's let Jonathan uh, speak on it. I, I do have a physical uh, artifact of the fifth finger right here. Artifact. I'll well, probably the, throw a, the, a the pink thunder tail. Yeah, I'll probably throw a picture of it up on the screen if you're listening on YouTube. But that one, that one had five fingers. Yes. Yes. So, would you like to explain uh, what the fifth finger controversy is? Sure. Or the illegal repton. Yeah. So interesting enough, um, you know, the the designs for the Godzilla '98 were so under um, lock and key that every night all of the prototypes and sculpts and drawings and everything had to be locked away, uh, and it was guarded, apparently. And they came up with the secretive name of uh, the Repton. So I don't know what happened or who got it wrong that they, they started making some of the prototypes with an additional finger. And then Toho, I guess when they were showed to Toho, they were pissed, and they demanded that that be fixed immediately and all the prototypes would be destroyed or they were going to cancel the license. Goodness. So those ones were called the illegal repton, which I thought was kind of funny. And I remember, I mean, I, I've, I've let go of a bunch of 
the prototypes, I think these days now that, that I, I had the fifth finger and I was like, you know, somebody must've snuck out like a whole, you know, truckload filled with them because there was, um, I think when I, when I got you that pink Thundertail, I got one, I got one, I think it was a couple of years prior on eBay and it too had the fifth finger. I mean, the, the, the razor bite, which is probably one of my least favorite uh, Godzilla 98 figures from Trendmasters. I had five prototypes and all of them were, they were all different. There's three of them that were resin. One was missing a tail or the tail wasn't designed yet or something like that. And the head sculpts were much nicer. I don't like what they did to the neck, but right. they, they, um, they had, so they all had the, this guy, right? The red one. No, oh, no, no. Okay. That, that's that. That's oh, the, wait, 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 um, hang on. that's okay. the fang bite or something. Isn't it? I mean, the razor bite is the oh, bigger one, like 10 okay. inches. This guy. Right. I have that guy too. Um, no, not oh, that man. one. It's the, it's the razor bite. Um, I don't, I mean, I, I, I can send you a picture, but I can't show it to you now. <laughs> no, that, that's the, that's the living Godzilla, Nick. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> what else you got there? You got a store behind you? Oh, uh, I got a couple of them. Okay. Well, anyway, so, so the, I mean, I took, I don't know if you remember Chris, but in, in my group, I had posted a photo of all five of the razor bites. And I had said, ironically, every single one of these has the fifth finger. So I remember hearing uh, one of the employees tell me that, that he had come up and he, he had a whole box filled with Godzilla prototypes that all had the fifth finger. And he was going to like take them because they were ordered to be uh, destroyed. And I think, I don't know, some supervisor or manager came by and, and said, you either, you know, get rid of those now or you're fired. Like it was very, I think it was very cutthroat. So they were dumped in the trash and I think he either called somebody else and said, you got to pick those up. So <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm sure I have some of those from that exact, you know, trash can, who knows? It's interesting. <laughs> you know, you hear all these uh, stories like, you know, you know, the uh, Biolante on, on the back of the Godzilla Wars and Doom Island box, it looks nothing like the 10 inch um, Doom Island version. Well, I, I, I had spoken with this guy who said to me, he said, I literally got this out of the trash at G-Fest. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, wow, Jesus, that's, wow. Uh, you know, because th th that thing on the back of the box, <clears throat> it, it's it's quite different than what we ended up with. And even then, we didn't really end up with it, considering the Doom Island line never really happened, right? And that was partially because all the focus was on the 98 film at that point. It was kind of crossing channels. Mm -hmm which is unfortunate because the Doom, I mean, the Doom Island line was, was scheduled to be the biggest and baddest Godzilla line of them all. And I think if, if it had seen the promotion and, and, you know, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, what, what was it when they, when they get the toys out there, not promotion. Distribution. Not, uh, yeah, there you go. If you, if it had this distribution like Godzilla Wars or King of the Monsters, then it probably would have been the biggest and baddest of all the, the their Godzilla lines, you know, until if, you know, the, the, the animated series would have gone into production. I'm, I, everybody's still pissed about that. And, and, you know, they're like, why did trend masters cancel the line? You know, blame fucking Walmart. They're the ones <laughs> that, 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 that did that. It all that comes because, down to Walmart. Well, you know, I've explained this, I think a number of times because I've seen so many people, you know, even on their own videos. Yeah. So, uh, you know, trend masters went out of business because of the Godzilla 98 line, that's not true at all. You know, God, uh, the 1998 line, they made millions and millions of dollars on those toys. The problem came that after the hype was down and all that stuff, there was too much product left on all the store shelves. So since Walmart was trend masters, biggest, uh, distributor, Nobody wanted any more Godzilla product, period. So Walmart gave the big fat no for the animated line, which was obviously a massive mistake uh, because they were, you know, working hard on getting the animated toys. And, and that, to me, I've, I think that was their, their best Godzilla line, for sure. I mean, it was an, pretty much an exact likeness to the cartoon, right? The colors were great. And the look, right? And, you know, one of the guys I was friendly with for years and still I'm with, uh, he designed most of the toys. And when I, I like, I remember I, I told that whole story when I, when I got coll into collecting Trend Masters was because of Osmosis Jones. And 
I, it took me years to find a little one inch by one inch thumbnail of a toy. And then I said, okay, that's done by trend masters and that's toy fair. And what's toy fair and toy fair is the biggest trade show that happens every uh, February, I think. And I remember, okay, you know, after I got, got hold of, of the prototypes for, for Drix and osmosis Jones, I said, well, what else do trend masters do? And I came across, um, uh, it, uh, it was a small, probably two inch by two inch thumbnail of the cyber Godzilla. And it was in this super dynamic pose, you know, the way the tail was the, the way that it was kind of twisted and one arm is up. And I thought, Holy shit. And me coming out of, you know, classical animation, this is what the type of pose that they, they, you know, they're pushing you to do is, is make it extreme or do this or do that. And this, this toy had all of those things. And then I went to eBay again and, 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 you know, lightning struck again. And it was there, uh, you know, it was, uh, I think it was listed at 150 bucks. I think on Monster Island Buddies, I said 50. So I think I, I, it dawned on me after, I believe it was listed, opening bid was 150. And this is what, 2003? And I waited till the last minute and I won it for 267 bucks. And I remember the, the, the seller who I got the osmosis stuff from, he said, I don't know how, he just, he just said to me, do you have the money? And I, I said, no but give me four days and I'll get it. And I, I, I had ended up, had a massive collection on the rock band, the police. And I kept all that stuff in the storage, you know, in bins and, and out, you know, in the dark, what's the point of having anything if you can't enjoy it every day. That's, that's what I, I learned after my mother passed away in 2000. So life is short. It's shorter for some people. And if you want to enjoy something, you might as well be able to see it every single day. So I sold off all of my police collection and within four days, you know, I had all these wicked imports and, you know, little seven inch singles and I had posters. I had a police Rubik's cube that I, I won for $137. Wow. It was only 25 of them made. And three years later I sold it for, um, 3,200. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Holy yeah. Shit. I mean, I, I had looked for that thing forever. Now, you know, people say, well, how do you find these things? And I'm like, well, you know what? That's an interesting thing too, because, you've got people that get mad at me because I, I, I don't want to give the toys to be 3d printed. That's not my plan. And that's what you want to do. Well, okay. It's going to be a little harder for you unless you have the actual prototype. That, that will be a question we have for you actually later down the road on this episode about, <laughs> uh, your thoughts on toy reproduction. So I guess right. we'll keep that later well, I, yeah i won't i won't go too heavy into that but <laughs> right. it, it's um you know it, o over how, how many years was it it was probably over 15 years i i somehow managed to acquire six different cyber godzilla prototypes <laughs> and and you know there was somebody that i i knew who told me he he had 12 i said so that's 18 right there you know and uh he told me he doesn't have 12 anymore i don't know how many he has but it's um i mean i'm down to three and I, th that was, you know, the coolest, definitely the coolest um, Godzilla prototype, I think, that of, of the 98. I'd argue know, it's one of the coolest Godzilla toys ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if, no, but the, the, the 3D printed stuff I've seen of those, absolutely horrendous. <laughs> you know, the arms look broken. You know, I mean, th there's a, you can't, you know, you can't match the original. That's for sure. Now, I guess if someone had, like, if I was 3D printing and I was casting this thing, that'd be a whole other story. Right. But, I mean, people that try to do it either by hand or just by looking at photos from mine on the internet or whatever, I'm glad they, they look like shit. Because <laughs> I, 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 I would worry that, you know, if it gets so, you know, so good that it actually looks like the authentic one, you know, that's going to cause a problem of like, well, is that real or is that 3D printed? And I listen, you know, people could be mad at me, which they probably are about the 3D printing thing. I'm not into that. And I've I've read, you know, people saying, well, it'll change the historical value of them and stuff like that. And and I, I my my theory behind all of that is when I started collecting, anybody else could have done the same thing and found them five minutes before I did. I put in the work. I did hours and hours and hours and hours of research. Did I mention hours? You know, it, it, it's, it's, I mean, the amount of emails. When I, when I had to find um, the Osmosis Jones stuff, I went through 8,000 listings, which doesn't seem like much now, but in, in, of toy vendors in St. Louis, Missouri. And then I sent um, 800 emails easily nonstop. And I did a little photo in Photoshop of like these, of, of the toys I was looking for. And I sent, like I said, over 800 emails. I think I got 
350 to 400 emails back. And the uh, funny thing was people are like, I don't know what, who's trend masters. What's an osmosis Jones. I've never heard of Drix, you know, all this stuff. And then, you know, I was getting pissed off and then it just went silent for two weeks. And then I got an email. Hi, I was the head designer on the toys. And I was like, boom, there's like the big explosion, you know, with the little rainbow and the, and you know, you got your little uh, chocolates at the end there uh, in the bucket or the pot and the pot of gold chocolates. There you go. That's an extended sentence. So it, it, it was, you know, uh, the effort that I put in, it, it, it paid back. And so when people would get mad at me, oh, yeah, you hog all the toys. I did the research. You could have done it, you know. And, and now I have the, the, the prototype group, and I've told people, you know what I did? Nobody helped me. I, I, I went out, and I, st- I started looking for all of the uh, official dealer catalogs because that would tell you what is out there. And so you know what to look for. And I, I, even when I had extra catalogs and people are bugging me, well, you know, can you find this for me? I'm like, no, why don't you do it? Here, I'll even give you a hand. I have a catalog. You know, I have this for sale. Do you want it? No, I'm not interested in catalogs. I want toys. And I just said, okay, I know where this is going. So I just, I, I walk away from that conversation. Right. And th- I, I don't know. I mean, I've always been very resourceful. And I remember even talking to the guy that I got the first osmosis figures from. I came across the keychains of like Drix and stuff like that. I said, hey, you know, have you ever seen this? He goes, oh, forget about those. You'll never find them. Those have all been destroyed. Well, I have five Drix keychain. <laughs> you know, so it, it's like if you tell me no, I'm going to find them probably even faster. I don't know. So it, it's, you know, it, you know that type of you want what you can't have. And so these guys are basically telling me I can't have it. But I found it, you know. So in, in that sense, um, was I lucky or was it just being there at the right time or a combination of both? Um you know, I listen, I, I've read horrible things about me. And I'm like, that's not true at all. But the funny thing is, is, you know, it, it's it very competitive. And, and I've tried to say this before, that prototypes are very secretive and extremely touchy. I'm one of the guys that actually talks too much, right? As you guys did this podcast, <laughs> probably ended up being 12 hours long. Um, but it, it's, I'm, I'm happy to share now, right? Because, what, what, you know, it, I've, I've done what I needed to do. I found what I wanted to find. So it, it's okay if I share some of the secrets or things of how I did it. Now, I don't think people are going to do that anymore. But, you know, I, I created the, the, the Trend Masters Prototype Toys Group. You know, it's, it's seven and a half years in existence, and now I had to throw the Redux at the end of the name because stupid Facebook glitch, you know, locked me out of the um, profile or whatever. So I had to start all over again. But, I mean, having a group like that, it's like I'm just supplying information. You know, so it's like uh, people can do a search in the group. Well, what does the dealer catalog image look like? Boom, there it is. So I, I had to do all this stuff by myself. And I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know my ass or my elbow. I do now, you know. But it, it's, it's um, you know, everybody to each their own. But this this was the, 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 the path I took. And it, it paid off for me. Yeah. Something I was going to add about the uh, the fifth finger thing from earlier, because there's there's a theory that's been floating around, like an extra uh, detail to it. So the original maquette that Pat did for the 98 Godzilla had a fifth finger to it. He added five digits because the Godzilla in the movie was going to be a mutant green iguana. And what they added, what he decided to do was add that fifth digit to show like he's a yeah, mutated the, iguana. The dew so. claw. It, 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 it kind of just looks like a nail, uh, like a claw coming out of like a very faint, like a tiny finger nub. Right. Yeah. So, so the idea was that the digit, when he mutates, it would have fused into his hand partially, but it was still like a hint of like what he was originally. So the pictures for the maquettes. I heard got leaked out to the early designers when they started making the toys, or at least they got sent out there. And then Toe said, "Oh, let's let's change all that because we want him to have only four four digits, not five, and we don't want to confuse the trademark and stuff." So right, like, right. and and there was other details too, like his spines had four. Um, it was like four rows instead of the, the traditional three, and those had to get changed too. Hmm. I don't know if I've heard all that, but that's it's definitely sounds plausible for sure. Yeah, I mean, some of these figures we actually have, like they do have the dew claw, like fused as well, like the yeah, mostly the babies, the babies. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, the I mean, I know this is a prototype, but the uh, X plus Defa the production one does too. So yeah, they, they kind of obviously the nowadays. I I don't even know if Toho even checks for the fingers because. Uh, 
the X Plus Godzilla 1998 has that kind of do finger, and then mm. on the YMSF it also has that also X has finger. It. So <clears throat> I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. Well, I, I guess I, they're a little bit more like lenient it. on it now. I don't know. I guess, you know, the whole thing of it, well, it's got to look like Godzilla, but it's not Godzilla. It's Godzilla name only. <laughs> uh, fuck <No>. off already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, of course, along with Trendmasters, we did want to speak on some of the other licenses that also had Godzilla toy licenses at the time. Of course, Trendmasters was the main one, um, but there were a few others that Jonathan isn't quite as knowledgeable on but we will go over Rit um, Ritsaurus and Toy Biz and right. um, well, so, that's, remember that I just came across that commercial it said Playmates but it was actually right. those were Toy Biz those were Toy Biz Toy Biz right toys, so, not, so I don't know how Playmates did they they were the first ones that did it and then sold the sculpts to Toy I don't know what the hell went on but so as Godzilla collectors may know um, Playmates in the current year of 2023 if you're listening now or if you're listening in the Apocalypse that's going to happen in the next two years. <laughs> this is one of the last surviving recordings. No. Um, Playmates currently has the Godzilla license, and they've been making these six-inch figures and selling them in Targets in Walmarts in the States. Um, but in 1998, Playmates was distributing Toy Biz's uh, Godzilla toys. Um, I don't know if it was like exclusively in the UK or something, but they... Uh, they were, um, they were helping distributing these. Uh, I think they were like remote control babies and Godzillas. Is that correct? Mm. I don't know if I've seen those. I think they're they're like electronic toys. Um, but so we have those toys by Toy Biz, and those those toys are interesting. I don't have any in my collection, but their sculpts are very interesting. They're very like. They're probably one of the more accurate sculpts to the movie. Like, the the Playmates Toy Biz uh, Baby Godzilla is probably the most accurate Baby Godzilla to that movie that there is. Um, only problem is, is that I think they're very unappealing to collectors because they have, like, these huge wheels on the feet and, like, <laughs> they, they have, like, a wire well, that attaches to, like, a remote control. What about that huge one that's got a handle on its back? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah that one's a... The irony is one of my, my, my animation professor, he, he worked on the original Scooby-Doo series in the 70s, and he actually had that toy, and he gave it to me. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, it's a very kind gesture, but after two weeks, I think I, I dumped it off at uh, Value <laughs> Village. I was like, I, I couldn't handle having that thing. The handle was just so ridiculous. It's... Yeah. I felt like sticking it in the shower, you know, as I'm getting older, so you don't <laughs> slip and fall in the shower. The handle was so big. Uh, oh man uh, yeah uh, I, I used to have one of those um what ended up happening was so a friend of mine that lived down the street of my brother had one because he got it right when it let came me out interrupt you for a second sorry nick is do you okay. have that is that right over your left shoulder i see a big godzilla is that does that have a handle that's not is the that handle that? one that's the that's the remote control one that goes with the baby ah. godzilla oh so yeah, that's right. to that's toy biz though right uh, port. I think so. Yeah, because if it's remote control, Trendmasters didn't do that. Yeah, right. It's, yeah, that's remote control. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. So the uh, the handle one. So that one was owned by my friend's brother, and he gave it to me when I was like ten. Now, um, unfortunately, he ended up uh passing away, mm -hmm. and his his older brother of the guy gave it to me. Uh, had kids of his own, and he asked me, hey, do you still got the Godzilla that my brother gave you? I said, oh, yeah, I still got the thing with the handle on it. And he said, yeah, well, I wanted to give it to uh, my son, if that's all right. And I said, yeah, sure, and I gave it back to him. So his, oh. so his kid could get introduced to the 98 Godzilla. Indoctrinating them young, I see. Nick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, need a, we need a whole army of Godzilla fans. Uh, now, Jonathan, I, I, I have a question for you. Um, sure. Because... Just, just you, the whole thing. Is that of, like, you, David? That Sorry, is, that is me, David. Yes, hello. Yeah. Okay. Um, just be going back, kind of a little going back to the whole toy reproduction thing. This just popped in my head. Uh, Brian Flynn, who is the founder and CEO of Super Seven, if you've heard of that uh, toy company, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. He did an interview. Actually, I went to high school with somebody named Brian Flynn. I know it's not the same guy, <laughs> but go on. Yeah. So he did a. Um, interview with Toho Kingdom recently because Super 7 actually has the Godzilla license as well and right. he has he voiced interest in because I mean I think the one of the first figures they did 
um, for the Super 7 reaction line was they reprodu they did a read a, a reaction version of the old Shogun Warriors Godzilla and the yeah. old Marusan Godzilla from the 70s. Would would you at all be interested if they were, you know, to kind of pick up where Trendmasters left off and okay. do little seven like five inch ones of those? So well, that, I was actually gonna I was actually gonna talk exactly about this really okay right i'm way so ahead of you maybe well, I, maybe I before have, we get... I have that shogun i have the burning reaction shogun right, right here it's in the box so open. maybe just because uh david ru rudely destroyed my plans <laughs> we'll just talk about it right now so i wanted to ask you jonathan i don't know if you'd organize this under like I don't want to say ethical. It's <laughs> well, toys. I, where are you going with this, Chris? <laughs> so, obviously, so if you if you're in this little prototype space, there has been a few uh, people that have expressed interest in reproducing the toys. There is a few people that have made um, like remakes of the toys in ZBrush, and they'll print like 3D resin or 3D uh, filament copies of them. And you know they they don't look as good. <laughs> uh, well, no. we'll keep it at that. Um, we've already been through that. But with that being said, um, I brought up to Jonathan the other day of an interesting story. So years ago, decades ago, there there was once plans from Kenner to make these little xenomorph alien toys oh right um and NECA has yeah. since picked up the torch for those i forgot about right. that so those went unreleased for you know obviously decades and then i believe the original molds are found and does NECA run reaction no they're 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 two separate companies okay so is reaction from super seven Re reaction is super seven yeah okay. it's, it's one of their various lines of figures they have so that wait, that's just like wasn't Funko connected to Reaction, or is that yeah, my mistake? Oh, I, th is I, Funko I don't reaction? think so. No, I, I think they do. Do they? I don't know. <laughs> just, just trust us. The Funko seems my to word be for everywhere it. now, which is God. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm pretty sure Funko owns Reaction. So, Reaction, um, of course, makes those alien Kenner reproductions. They don't call no, them like Kenner, NECA but... is the one who does the alien. Oh my fucking god, bro. I... <laughs> <laughs> point point is, alien, NECA does the alien recreations. Super Seven under their reaction line is doing the Godzilla recreations. What? I thought they were. I thought the alien. Whatever. <laughs> point Do is, your research, Chris. God. <laughs> Do your research. Okay. So Google it. Point is, uh, modern toy companies have kind of banked on this because obviously, like nostalgia is huge right now. Love it or hate it, there. I think there's good and bad <laughs> sides of that. Actually, that. That would be a good name for a, a new toy line, right? You got reaction, or you've got love it or hate it. <laughs> That's not bad, actually. That would work. I see that. <laughs> so, yeah, of course. So you know, they're kind of banking on that nostalgia because it's like it's kind of like this. You know, these Kenner aliens are kind of like this mysterious, like they almost look familiar, like something you would have gotten as a kid, except they never existed until mm -hmm. now. So. Not only is this cool because, you know, people that were interested in that canceled toy line can finally own those toys, but it's also interesting from a preservation standpoint. So, obviously, you know, things, a plastic, <laughs> unfortunately, plastic exists for like thousands of years <laughs> before decomposing. <laughs> but with that being said, there's only a handful of Trendmasters toys and, you know, God forbid, you know, Jonathan's house burns down or something. <laughs> They're all gone. <laughs> well, I, so, I, you know, it's where did I just read that? Somebody asked me something about. Oh, they were they were we were having a debate, but they were saying, "Why are you so against you know the historical preservation of this stuff?" And I said, "You know, if we if, if so and so is three D printed, I said right. so." You're gonna 3D printing. You're gonna 3D print something which is not authentic. That's not like. Press, you know, uh, preserving anything. You're preserving something that's fake, right? Right. So they're like, "Well, what are you going to do with your with your toys?" I'm like, "Well, I can't take them with me." So you know, they'll. Uh, well, my we can put them in the casket. Will, <laughs> you could, yeah. But I mean, at the at the same time, well, have you seen that? There's a there's a mem. I call it mem, not memes. I mean, if it was a meme, you'd think it would be M E E M, right? So <laughs> it's M E M E. I say it's a mem. That's just me. But th there's one where. Um, 
there, there you see a hearse uh, carrying like a U-Haul truck, and it says uh, <laughs> something like, when you die and you refuse to give your Star Wars figures to the rest of your family or something like right. that. Right. Have you not seen that? Hey, look, mummies, uh, you know, well, kings in, in ancient Egypt, they buried their cats with them. And all, so. the other, all the others, you know, in the pyramids, the pharaohs were buried with like, all the other like treasures that they would yeah. that they might have needed yeah. so, in the afterlife. Hey, look, maybe you need those trend masters in your afterlife. Maybe you never know. Maybe you never know. I mean, we look. I mean, not to get existential here, but we don't know what happens after we die. Maybe there will. No. Maybe maybe I'll get to keep my pink. I think you get <laughs> you. You know what happens if you watch the Iron Giant, and ironically, you have not seen that movie. I will. I watch it. Chris, I'll watch you've it. never they, seen they the Iron Giant. What, they talk about souls don't die. And you haven't listened to Tibet Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar, so. <laughs> I don't see how oh, that. And I probably won't. <laughs> oh, man. You're missing out. Uh, I'm kidding. Check for burns. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch Iron Giant don't if you listen to anyway. I told you, I, I could have sent you. I have a DVD <laughs> that's sealed here. I pirate all my movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. but I won't tell anybody. That'll be our little secret. I'll tell and people. Your and your 10 listeners. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, so I, I suppose the question is, in, in this hypothetical situation, if someone from Super 7 or someone from Reaction, someone from NECA, someone from Funko... If knocked they, on my door and wanted to have tea and croissants. Yeah. <laughs> John Reno. Um, so if they came up to your door right now and they offered you, if they, if they gave you a good, I'll just say a good number amount of, of cash for not only to borrow your toys, but to pay you for the trouble that went through to collect all of them. Um, and they made reproductions under a new line or maybe not even like reproductions even even if they just not even made like exact reproductions like maybe they made like a six inch version of like all the big you know what i mean would that be something that you would be open to having done maybe you know maybe if they could even bring me in as a consultant because i guess i could say i know the toys so well um but it, it, the way you describe it, it sounds like they're basically paying to to you know as if I'm selling them the toy um, right yeah, well i don't I, I don't know. know how they would do it, right like I don't know I didn't really I forgot to read into the story about the xenomorphs. I don't know if they like found the molds or they just found like prototypes and like redid the molds. I have no idea, but it rem it reminds me I think I told you this before it's like I've had people say to me, why don't you get a booth or a table at G-Fest and bring all your animated Godzilla there's and, uh, uh, prototypes and set up a, a display there? And I thought, are you kidding me? Why would I do that? <laughs> you know, just, just so that, you know, I could see I'd be totally, like, paranoid, you know, and I'll be the only person behind a table, and then there's going to be, like, a group of, you know, mm -hmm. dudes that are going to come, and they're going to have a little plan, you know, they're going to distract me. Someone, I'll, I'll see, like, a cyber Godzilla running towards the exit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, you know what? It, it, it's it, the the photos that I have of these things online. That that's better than 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 you know. It's as close to it as you're gonna get, instead of holding it. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. it's um, I, I I don't trust a lot of people because I've I've had you know my fair share of scams thrown in my face and stuff like that. So right. it's um you know I I try to protect them. You know I mean I've I've got all the the resins behind glass doors and whatnot. So. You can't touch that stuff. You, the more you touch it, you're going to face breakage and whatever. But um, that that's it's an interesting question uh, because I, I have no idea what I would do. I mean, I, I I'm probably the the guy who was the most disappointed that that the, the that Walmart pulled the plug on those toys. That right. there was what I had heard was that you know Trendmasters was working on a whole bunch of other mutations, you know, from the Godzilla of the series. And and nobody gave me any names. I I would have loved to have seen like a prototype of the Shrewster, you know, or uh, what were some of the other names? Um there's a lot of great creature designs all done by Phil Barlow. And I remember when I got the um quarter quetzal or whatever the hell the, that that flying bird reptile creature thing when i finally got the prototype of that and i was showing him um you know he was interested i mean imagine those are his designs and the, those toys that never came out so that that's got to hurt a little bit but right. when i told him his designs were brilliant you know and everybody that hated godzilla 98 the movie 
most of those people were so sour, they wouldn't even go anywhere near the animated series. And I just said, watch that because it totally redeems the movie and it's, it's the way the movie should have been. And, you know, Godzilla's got his nuclear breath and he's blowing up all the mutations and there's good battle scenes and, you know, and you've got the dude from Beverly Hills, 901, 90210. Yeah. So from, um, you know, Beverly Hills, nine, whatever. So it, Ian, yeah. Ian was uh, the voice of Nick. Yeah. So yeah. I've, I've never um, met a, a fan of like a Godzilla fan who like hasn't had anything bad to say or has had anything bad to say about Godzilla the series. Like it's, it's kind of right? the yeah. consensus that like Godzilla the series is what Godzilla 98 should have been. Yes. All right. And, and look, I mean, just this week, right? Mondo revealed a new space Godzilla that they're making, which what already has... sold out. Mm, re- yes. No, they made another one. Mm, I, that one sold out too. I, ju- I looked today. And I and it, within an hour it sold out. No, it went but they're, on sale they're, today. they're making another repaint though. Oh, I, I know, but okay. they, they they only dropped uh, one today. I know, I know. So they're making one that's in classic Space Godzilla Trendmasters colors. Hmm. I think there's a lot well, of that, nostalgia for a Trendmasters. Hold that thought. For, for hold that thought. I just bought two baby Godzilla 1998 prototypes that are painted up like the Space Godzilla colors. Oh, oh very oh, cool. Nice. Because that's that that space that old space Godzilla is a very colorful figure. Oh yeah, but it's, isn't isn't I thought that was wasn't that deemed the best space Godzilla figure ever? It very well may have been, even though it doesn't look like the movie. It, well, it does in the sculpt, but in the paint, it's completely. Well, I, th- I think the, a lot of the paint on the on that figure was um, inspired by Noriyoshi Orai's poster for yeah, the film. Exactly. Well, and 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 on the, the I'm friends with the sculptor of that space Godzilla, and he told me he says if you like the one that was put out, he said, you should see the original sculpt. And he goes, it's sitting here on my desk. And I've been waiting to see photos of that thing for over 15 years. <laughs> I'm like, you know, just, and he doesn't have a camera. He doesn't have a computer. I'm like, wow. So it's been like it's nothing but a frustrating. Flintstone? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah those, are some of, those are some of his friends, but no, it's, it's, I mean, one, one day I'm sure uh, I'll, I'll see it, but you know, he had sculpted over 300, um, prototypes for trend masters and he said to me all the stuff that he would do like he'd make them look mean or angry or you know far more ferocious or something like that and then they'd always come and say no you got to soften this or you got to change that and he happened to keep the original sculpt for the space godzilla and he wow. says it's a thousand times better so yeah. wow. speaking of uh space godzilla and the godzilla wars logo that has both uh, godzilla and space godzilla on, those are just cropped uh pictures of a rise poster uh, the oil paint right. versus space Godzilla. Right. I've seen those. So that, that's, that's the, you mean the logo for Godzilla wars, right? Yeah. Like where it has, like, they both have red eyes. Yeah. That, yeah those yeah. are just crop pictures from a rise oil painting for the Japanese poster. Well, Chris, you remember I took that, that, that photo and I, I, I uh, uh, edited it and put the Cosimo, his face, Put and I called it. Uh... <laughs> 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 but no, and, and he was a, he was a, he was a he was a wicked wicked the, the coolest cat ever. He was jet black, big white Fu Manchu whiskers, and my <laughs> wife named him Cosmo after Kramer on Seinfeld because he was just so goofy <laughs> and he would do the wildest stuff. Oh my and God. so I, I you know when, when he was he, he died in 2019 horribly at um, 19 from renal failure. And I, I decided I, I made him the official mascot of the Trendmasters prototype toys group. And I put his face into that poster and I called it Catzilla Wars, you know, the, the, <laughs> the, fi- the final cat frontation, you know, coming soon or whatever. And uh, I mean, you know, Chris and I are always talking about uh, the black, you know, because he's got his, his, his black cat, Ben. And uh, he was a big everyone. Everyone loved the Cosimo. Um, so and and uh, I just thought of that now when you're talking about that logo, right? And uh, I think that brings me back in the toy preservation. <laughs> so, sorry, the, the cat's almost going to be sidetracked. So, <laughs> the uh, so interesting thing you said about like the original Space Godzilla skull. So, you know, plastic toys are one thing. I mean, even the the original Star you Wars. Have, you have to- LL. You have LL Cool J pumping up in those ma- ma- massive headphones you got on. <laughs> no, it's Kendrick. <laughs> but uh, right. he just blew us. My head is like a shark fin. <laughs> you so, know what? You know what the LL stands for in Cool J, right? 
What is it? Ladies love Cool J. Dude, you didn't la- know that? Ladies love Jonathan, I didn't know bro. That. I didn't That's know what that. that was? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So now Chris has Puff LL. Daddy. You think I think through. everyone in this call has ADHD. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> the topic of preservation <laughs> we we're we we're an hour and 15 minutes into this episode <laughs> and we haven't even gotten to the other toys we're getting to the heart of the matter okay this this podcast is brought to you by deep blue sea and ll cool j <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by adderall, oh my God. adderall. so <laughs> it's on the topic of toy preservation right so if you go on ebay and look up any of the kenner star wars stuff they're you know they're starting the Obviously, plastic is going to be around for a long, long time. Depressing fact. But they they aren't in the best of shape. And even, like, some of the old Kenner stuff is starting to get, like, reproduced and, like, made into reproductions for adult collectors. And so those are just mass-produced figures. Like, every kid in America had those when those came out. What we're talking about here is 25 or even older, sculpts of toys, original clay molds, resin, resin sculpts, uh, wax, clay, wax, clay. Those things don't last forever. Those things do not last forever. And, you know, hate to, not to depress you out, Jonathan, about your toy collection, but uh, there's very limited numbers and, one day, not everything, especially like the wax stuff, isn't going to be around forever. So, you know, not saying mass producing everything is is the solution, but I mean, shit, if reaction came to your front doorstep and it was like, here, here, you know, here's enough money to like keep yourself afloat for the next, here's enough money to retire early. And they're like, just let us use some of your toys and we'll reproduce them and bring them to targets everywhere. I mean, would that be something that you'd be maybe down with for the right price? Yeah, I, I, I guess it, it's kind of a, uh, you know, it's, it's such a such a hypothetical because honestly, they're not going to come to my door. <laughs> but, but, but it's it's um, um, it, it would be something I'd, ha- I'd I'd have to give some thought to for sure. Yeah, I mean, for the, for the in the interview that Brian Flynn gave for Toho Kingdom, he seemed very very uh, enthusiastic about the license. Um, I I don't know what else he's mentioned about wanting I mean, to do. Hey, I know Chris from TK. Maybe we can uh, honestly introduce yeah. I mean, Jonathan. He's, the... he's the one who interviewed him. Was Chris? Yeah, I mean, we can um, introduce but Jonathan. Also, like, uh, Brian or that's his name, right? Brian Flynn. But yeah, they also just like within the last two weeks did another recreation. They did a they, re- they did a reaction figure of the old Shogun Warriors or Dan right. as well. And I, I don't know if this is true, but I heard that it's a 3D scan and they like... I, I wouldn't if, be surprised. Yeah. Isn't I mean, everything a 3D scan now? At this point, yeah. yeah. Well, 3D scanning is getting so advanced now. It's like... The, the scans are getting pretty good. Like, Well, right, but it, it's just like, you know what? I'm, I'm not that big on Flash animation, right? Because right. I, I miss the classic in the 70s. You've got Cell... You know, I mean, I, one of my classes, I still I still teach the kids cell painting. Yeah. I st- my car is still like one of those stone vehicles that you like pedal with your feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> no, but, but seriously, I, I mean, it's it's I, I'm not um, I th- without the you know the hands on stuff, you're you're losing a lot of the organic well feel right. to it. And you know that's like the same mm-hmm. thing with. I mean, I'm sure you know, right? Going from resin to plastic. Uh, the you lose a lot of detail. Yeah, you lose a lot of detail. So it's the same thing with scanning. You know, you can you can do like a mold of the toy, but you know sometimes that can damage the original toy. So you know, yeah, it, it's it's an advanced question. It doesn't have like a simple yes or no answer. Um, because you know, like like fuck, like imagine trying to make a copy of that uh the Firebird, right? So that one would. I mean, the, the Quetzalcoatl, 
Is that what it's called? His name is Quetzalcoatl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Quetzalcoatl. I, I don't know. I... Quetzalcoatl. So I'm I'm like almost certain Jonathan only. Should we has... say it all together at the same time? All right. Yeah. All right. Ready. Three, Three two, 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 one. one. Quetzalcoatl. 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 All right. There we go. Jonathan, we go. I'm like get almost... some harmonies going. Add some LL Cool J beats. <laughs> 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 now it's got to be Puff Daddy. We got to keep keep in time. And, Come and, with me. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. Puff Daddy is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> No. He, he went by I, P. Listen, Diddy, and now no it's idea. Diddy. I, now. I have no idea why he changed the name to Diddy. Diddy to me sounds small, does it not? That's a little Diddy yeah. of a figure. Puff Daddy had a much cooler name. Yeah. Sound to it. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, made, it made me think of a bearded dragon when he called himself Puff Daddy. So, well, yeah, Puff the Magic Dragon. Yeah. That's the kids' book, right? Yeah. Oh my god. So we, we still haven't gotten to the other toys, but fuck, what I was gonna say? Damn it. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, it's it's definitely something you'd have to explore. Like with the Quexus Caudal figure, um, in particular, you I'm almost certain there's probably only like I don't know if you have a number specifically, Jonathan, but the number that I would ask them to pay me in order to use the toys? No, 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 no. Of Quexacuadles <laughs> that exist. Oh, I was told four. Four. Yeah. Wow. And Jonathan has one of them and it's in pieces. No, it's not in pieces, it's together. With rubber I, bands. Is there? Does this have to go over? No, I don't have a rubber band. Oh, on it okay. now. Oh. No, I mean it, uh, when I bought it, it had, it was sealed in a bag for over fourteen years. So I I opened it, and you know, and, and I put it together because what, what do I? I don't kind of look at it like it's broken in a yeah, bag. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to set it up. Right, and then so, you know, then there's also the advanced thing of like, oh shit. Well, how do you reproduce the? The play aspects without like you know like shredding the figure up because the Quexacuadal, uh, I think he had like a dart in his mouth or something. It's a true? massive missile, and right. remember I could still hear Monster Island buddies in my head going, "Of course it has a missile. It's a Trendmaster thing." <laughs> <laughs> you got his impression down. It's you know you're a hundred percent correct. A lot of those Trendmasters. Oh man! Well, then, All right, I have to I have to mention this though that there was a guy that kept messaging me. Uh, I think he was in my group. And he, he said to me, you're, you're, you're MIB, aren't you? And I was like, <laughs> no, I'm actually, I'm not. He goes, come on, for sure you are. You're, you're, you're Monster Island buddies. I said, no, actually, I'm not. I said, I know who he is, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> and then, and then I blew his mind when our, our podcast interview thing came out <laughs> and he wrote me, said, how the fuck did you do that? I go, do what? He goes, how did you do both voices like that? I said, I didn't, oh I didn't do goodness. both voices. I said, I'm talking to Monster Island Buddies. I was so unaware was... Monster Island Buddies was like an anonymous person. I, I had oh, no idea that was the I, case. I, I saw his face. Well, I've seen his face a few times. Mm. If, you, if you catch him at G-Fest without the mask on, sometimes he doesn't have it on. Right. Um, I used to know his... This just sounds scary. Um, I used to know his full name, but I, I used I to know where he lived, his yeah, IP address. But I don't. It's it's been a long time. Um, I, know, I know all those things. I mean, he he's he's bought a number of prototypes from me, so I'm I'm not. You uh, know, is tell, it PO, tell, is tell it everyone PO how much box he spent. MIB. <laughs> tell is everyone it, you know, how much he spent. Tell him. Uh, tell everyone like when he uh, when he leaves the house when no one's home. Yeah, Jonathan, uh, do you know his bank account information? Does he keep I his do. doors unlocked? I do. It's seven seven eight six three two one zero four. Awesome. So did you get that? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, right. It's, uh, um. Anyway, so of course, Trend Masters isn't the only Godzilla licensee. Uh, Jonathan knows less so about these guys, but they're around. Obviously, we talked about Toy Biz. We already went over Toy Biz. I think they only did the the. I could be wrong, but the main thing Toy Biz did was the, uh, of course, um, the electronic toys. So another big one's Equity Toys. So I have a puppet here with a hard right. head shell. That this doesn't guy. make sense, though, that so many different companies were making, you know, I, I would have loved that if they would have done that for Osmosis Jones. Well, here's like right. 10 companies doing Osmosis Jones figures. It doesn't work like that. So... This one's Equity. I, I think Equity also did... Let's see. I have it written down. They did the plushies. They did some keychains. And they also did some other stationary items. So they might have made these erasers. I don't recall. Under the company might have done these. But right here is a stamper and an eraser. The stamper is... I was Godzilla. trying to figure out what that thing yeah. was. So it stamps just some, like, 
footprint, I think. Yeah. Right? No, no, no. It has. It's just some artwork of Godzilla. Is so the, is the ink still good? Yeah, it is. <laughs> the stamper doesn't say. Let's go. Uh, yeah. the, st the stamper doesn't say gyno. <laughs> yeah. So. So he stamps like a little illustration of Godzilla. It's just from like the style guide. If you if you can track down, I mean, Jonathan. I don't know if you can see this. <laughs> it's on okay. the stand now. You've branded. So yeah, there is a there is a style guide for Godzilla ninety eight. If you don't know, um, I'm a graphic designer, so I've had to deal with this before. Usually, with every license, there's a style guide, mm -hmm. um, and with that style guide, there's a bunch of like clip art that the studio makes. And you can use that clip art um, within any like Godzilla product, and it, yeah. it's it's easier to go through the style guide because if you make your own artwork, you have to like manually get it approved by the licensor. Um, so, like for example, this stamp, the the little illustration is just from the style guide. It's like a little Godzilla illustration. So anyway, we have this stamp of Godzilla walking, <laughs> and then we have another sculpt of Godzilla climbing in the Chrysler building. And there's two more that I don't have. And the uh, Chrysler building's an eraser, you said? Yes, it's an eraser. So these two sculpts are like interchangeable. And so like there's we, a version we of talk we have to talk about that Chrysler building because you oh. know when Trend when Trend we, we did that bank. Right. So the Chrysler building was a bit of an issue because Trend Masters did a bank of Godzilla climbing the Chrysler building and it famously got cease and desist because they did not own the license to use the Chrysler. Oh my God. Which yeah. many people yeah, don't so know. The, the toy, many, the toy was with, was re recalled. Many landmarks are copyrighted, mm -hmm. which is why if you play a Grand Theft Auto game, they don't call it New York city. They call it Liberty city. Not because New York is trademarked, but because they, so they can have like an out for all of the landmarks that are in the game. Like if you, or if you play Watch Dogs and you go to like that big bean statue in the Chicago, mm -hmm. it looks like some random other shit in the Spider-Man PS4 game. They took the World Trade Center and sliced the top in half so they didn't have to pay to use the World Trade Center. It, you, you get what I, my point. And in Grand Theft Auto 4, <laughs> they took the statue and replaced the face with uh, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> okay. Is that a static image of Nick? Or are you breathing, Nick? Because I haven't seen that link. I'm breathing. I mean, do you see me? Like, okay. Your, your, your picture, your, your face looked like a picture. Because I was like, right. oh, that's oh, that's so, so going back to these little, I believe, equity figurines. So these were interchangeably uh, erasers and stampers. They have a version that's just a stamper, a version that's uh, an eraser. They did four of these. There's, of course, the Godzilla walking, the Godzilla in the Chrysler building. There is one where he's climbing out like a city road. And I think there's another one where he's like kind of uh, like kneeling down or something. So what's special about these in particular is um, you might have heard a story about uh, the original Godzilla design getting leaked and JD Lee's of G Fan magazine put it in his magazine. Of course he and did. And that goes into another story that I forgot to mention because there is a rumor that they took an extra from Godzilla 98 and they specifically uh, casted him th to look like JD. <laughs> <laughs> what? You, you know where he's at? I found out where he is in the movie. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think he's on the bridge when Godzilla jumps over the the bridge from yeah, the water. Yeah, he's the one driving. Yeah. The one driving. <laughs> oh well, I gotta go watch that scene again. <laughs> Mister Unvaccinated. Anyway, <laughs> so this little sculpt of Godzilla on the Chrysler building is the. This is how the design was leaked. This. Uh, a prototype of this sculpt leaked on the internet, and this was yeah, yeah, the public's first uh, introduction to this Godzilla design. So, <laughs> sorry, long-winded fun fact, but um, <laughs> very interesting piece. So I'm glad I've had that guy for a long time. He's probably, like, one of my favorite little figurines. He's just, like, even though it's an eraser, it's just, like, it's just, like, great sculpt. Like, and... You'll find that with a lot of these products. Like, uh, I forgot who made this keychain. Was it Equity? Or maybe it was someone else. Um, this cool little Godzilla keychain. And the company that produced these guys did a few variations of this. There's one where he's like on a straw, and it's like a little plastic straw for kids. And it's like a little, has like a little yeah, this, wavy the straw tip. straw one sounds like Equity. Yeah, it sounds like it's probably Equity. And it looks like Equity also, they always did these like brown. Well, it's, it's, what's that? The arm is, is the arm stuck in the air? Yeah, he's like jumping in the air. It's really cool. It's kind of like Cyber Godzilla. And yeah, so you'll find with some of these guys is they have like these really cool tiny sculpts. Um, 
there's a few others like that. Like there's a Godzilla shot glass where you can twist out the bottom and there's a little Godzilla figurine that you can play with. Um, there's a Godzilla toothbrush where Godzilla, there was like this cool Godzilla figurine and he has this toothbrush coming out of his mouth. Oh God. Um, and then there's a Godzilla shampoo and it comes with a figurine of Godzilla hugging the shampoo bottle. There's a Godzilla chapstick. Wait, wasn't that, that a cup holder? Yeah, they it, have it a holds. Cup holder. Shampoo's yeah. the first I hear of it. Yeah, no, they also have another sculpt of from that was exclusive to Taco Bell that holds your cup. Um, and then there's uh, a Godzilla chapstick holder, which they also like double build as like a. They also sold it as like a a finger puppet. Mm -hmm. um, it came in like a in like a soap, and once the soap melts, you get the Godzilla figure inside. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's crazy, dude. They, they did a lot of weird shit. Um, so, uh, one company that probably maybe most fans are, are, uh, recognize is the Taco Bell toys. So these were made by Applause and there's several of them. Um, there's this little baby Godzilla wobbler. There is a full body adult Godzilla, which kind of doesn't do anything. There's, yeah, I used to have that. There's a tank that's also a water squirter. Okay, I was trying to figure out what the heck that yeah, thing did. You load it with water and then you I fire. See. Where do you load it into? Into the back. That's such a small little thing to fill it up with. Then there was also a disgusting fucking toy that's a baby Godzilla and it's covered in this like rubber plastic transparent plastic. It had the most vile name. Yeah. And I'm trying to, I, I, I'm going to look it up. The Godzilla. Oozer, the Godzilla cream, the Godzilla juice, some shit like uh, that. Guzzler, I think it's called Guzzler Godzilla. God, <laughs> something yeah. very Godzilla close to that. Yeah. That's disgusting. Anyway, it was a little baby Godzilla in a little pocket of gelatin and, or the slime. And mm. I think they're kind of rare because I'm imagining most parents probably threw it out because. I, I had stumbled upon the creator of that or the designer of that. Really? He, had, he had posted the resin prototype of that and i asked if it was for sale and he said no and that was the extent of our conversation yeah that thing's disgusting. oh it's way worse it's it's, it's a oh it's no. way worse it's not guzzling God, godzilla it's gurgling godzilla, oh, gurgling oh. godzilla. God. Yeah. That's yeah, weird. so yeah, i think it like it, it comes out of like a sewer or something does it come like, with some cough syrup <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's the sculpt's pretty similar to the wobbler baby it's just uh I actually haven't seen a photo of it outside the egg. Um, if I get one, I might have to cut it out because the gelatin is dried up anyway. I mean, I'm looking at the post you made on Facebook, and uh, yeah. one Jonathan Tchaikovsky has left a comment with the prototype of it. Oh, wait. Can you show me? Yeah, yeah. I, I posted oh, that. No, this yeah, one's actually a different disgusting Godzilla. Oh, it is? Okay. So there's another Godzilla. I forgot what company sold them. It was a very similar. It, it was like a baby Godzilla that came in like a packet of like gelatin, <laughs> and it, it, you know, of course, it's all dried up now, and it looks like a weird like, like old. It's 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 vile, dude. <laughs> and I think they're rare because people, you know, obviously they fucking throw them out. Um, also, in this Taco Bell set was a little gun that had an airplane on it, and it shot little discs. Um, and then I think that's it outside of the toys that they made for uh, toddlers. So, you know, at McDonald's, you can request... At McDonald's well, and Taco Bell, you can request uh, toys for younger. There was the KFC younger. ones in the, in the UK. Right. Well, no, no, you no. Know, you, you know you want them from me. <laughs> <laughs> so, in Taco Bell, they, they sold a couple of wobblers for toddlers. There's one that's like a baby Godzilla trying to crawl they out a road. They called them toddlers? <laughs> they should. Toddlers. And I think... They called them toddlers. I think the other one's another baby Godzilla. <laughs> um, and then, of course, as Jonathan mentioned, we also have the KFC toys. So in Australia and the UK, KFC oh, had gosh. these exclusive set of Godzilla toys. Um, I believe there was a little mini figurine of Godzilla that came with like a clay mold of some buildings. And you could like uh, use Play-Doh and like make as many buildings as you want to have Godzilla to smash. And then you have another tank water squirter. <laughs> another similar to the Taco Bell one that I forgot to mention that it was a helicopter. It was a little uh, like a gun that shoots a helicopter spinner. 
Taco well, they Bell had it one. They that, right? Because it's like Car- the Carl's Jr. toys, the same thing. I think yeah. you, have to, you have to pull a string. There's fucking three and of them. I think the thing, yeah, it's ridiculous. So they all had the same exact idea. The KFC has this helicopter fireer. <laughs> Why didn't one of these companies, what's too bad that Carl's Jr. didn't make like a, a mini Schrooster toy? <laughs> that so, would have been cool. The Crackler, that's the other That's the right. other mutation I was thinking about, yeah. So in the KFC set, they, you had those, and then... There was another tank. I think this one just shot missiles, and it came with a little cardboard Godzilla. And then it came with a Godzilla... There was a Godzilla stamp that might have been exclusive to either Australia or UK because that one's really hard to find. (sighs) Sorry, this is so (laughs) long-winded. And then the third and final uh, Kids Meal Premium set that they made was for Godzilla the series. And this also doubles as... The only toys they produced for Godzilla the series. So there was a, a little baby Godzilla, that, or baby Godzilla, Godzilla Jr., I guess you could say, that had a little light that came out of his mouth. Um, then there it was... It hurts to push that button. Yeah. There was another Godzilla helicopter firer that has Godzilla Jr. climbing on the building. And then there's the boat, I think the Calico, or is that the original? Heat, the heat seeker. Okay, the heat, the heat seeker. seeker. And then there's the last one is a baby Godzilla water shooter. It's a little rubber Godzilla, and you squeeze him, and he comes in an egg. So yeah, he's purple. He's purple, and it comes in the green. And that tent. one is also super rare because it came from Hardee's and Carl's Jr., which only exists in, like, certain parts of the United States. And then there's... <laughs> oh, God. And then there's additional things that you can buy that come outside the... Uh, the actual kids meal that you can buy separately. So KFC had these two hand puppets of Godzilla and the baby Godzilla. And then Taco Bell had uh, the cup holders. And then they also had the premium uh, collector's cups. God damn. I think that was it for the fast food. Are you sure? You sure? (laughs) I'd like to think yes. Um, So we already talked about the playmates. We already talked about Taco Bell with the applause toys. Carl's Jr. Right. So, adult collectors. Adult collectors have uh, some stuff of their own. They got a little flashlight. Just kidding. Yeah. That, that's definitely <laughs> weird. Yeah. And some got really lucky and uh, got the Godzilla pinball somehow. The right. Sega pinball. Which, which is honestly a great pinball machine, like, which unironically. Isn't necessarily mm-hmm. a toy. But I do think it has like a 3D model of Godzilla in it. It does, doesn't it? yeah. Right. Yeah, it does. Figure. Is it, it reused from something, or is it like a brand new sculpt? I think it was a brand new sculpt. So it's got his head, and it's got his claw like this, and his claw will sometimes like come down and like try to grab or swipe the ball. That's so cool. And it's, it, it's pretty cool. But it, honestly, it looks like something like Trend Masters kind of made though, because it's got like a Trend Masters like look to it. You know what I mean? Like really? I maybe maybe this they got the same guy who worked mm. on the toys to do it. Interesting. Yeah. So nowadays though, um, I want to say post Godzilla Final Wars. Um, obviously, as you know, Godzilla nineteen ninety eight did less than expected at the box office. It's, it did good. But it wasn't the money maker Sony was. Expecting. Ironically, I think it's still not money wise, but ticket wise, it sold more tickets than like all the MonsterVerse films since. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just a different time in 1998. It, and also, think it, it, it made its money back though. It just yeah. didn't make the big hit they were thinking it was because they wanted a big hit like Independence Day, yeah. right. Memorial Day, and it didn't reach those numbers. Right. So, post Final Wars, uh, Toho has kind of recognized that Godzilla 98, or Zilla as he's known now, is kind of not nearly as popular, especially with Japanese fans, um, than the other Godzillas. Um, however, we still got, we still get some Godzilla 98 items. They're kind of far and few in between, but. We have uh, a limited statue by Earth Trek. And this isn't like a definitive list. This is just kind of what I've come across. Uh, I know there's like a couple model kits and stuff, but the the officialness of them is, is kind of up in the air. Mm-hmm. Um, Earth Trek, though, made a limited run statue. I think there's like 1,000 or 10,000 of them. Um, X Plus actually made 
a Godzilla statue. I think it was their first Godzilla ever. Actually. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Oh, is that, is, okay. Is that is that that brown one with yes. the blue fins? Yeah. Yes. I got to tell you, I hate that sculpt. <laughs> I, I think yeah. and the tail's way too long. It's completely off model. It, it it looks like it's kind of on the the verge of cartooning, like a cartoony version because the the scales or whatever. It just that sculpt always it's, bugged me. Yeah, it's um. I mean, like you I know can people get it love second. it, and that's that's fine, but I don't. It goes for around like five hundred on eBay, and Easy. yeah, it's it's not. In my opinion, I rather wait for another company that hopefully, which we will talk about. Um, to you know make a similar toy because it's one of the their it's literally like x plus's first godzilla ever and it looks pretty rough it's in like a really terrible pose it's 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 strange i mean it's, x plus has come a long way since then oh, for sure oh yeah i mean and speaking of x plus x plus recently the past was it four years ago maybe? i think so yeah they made if that. a defo reel godzilla 1998 and right here yeah, is my prototype that jonathan tchaikovsky sold to me um so it's if you don't know what Defro Reel is, it's more of a chibi style. They're kind of more affordable than the regular X Plus stuff. Um, but they made in 1998. They unfortunately didn't make a full body proper Godzilla 98. But um, one of these days, one of these days, hopefully. I mean, Spiral Studio is doing that massive of statue. Course. So just by total coincidence, when we started this show, Spiral Studios, which is kind of a they're kind of a newer company when it comes to Godzilla licensing. Mm -hmm. Uh, very, 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 very high end, judging by the prices yeah. they're asking. They they did a King Ghidorah and they did uh, a couple baby Mothras, and I don't know if they did anything else. I th they did those. They did the uh, Fire Godzilla. Right. Did they do a Rodan too? I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. Not yet. So, they just announced that they're making a Godzilla 1998, and I got to say, and I don't think I'm out of line saying this, it is definitely the best. Godzilla 1998 toy Hands down. ever, ever. It's going to be thousands and thousands there, of dollars, but... There's a... The only thing that I can think of that's similar in quality is um, an independent toy maker um, called Tom Tist uh, made his own... Was he the guy who disappeared after taking everything? Yeah, he yeah. scammed a bunch of people and dipped. Oh, cool. But apparently a few people got them. <laughs> so they're right. out there. Um but that one was a crazy sculpt, and it's unfortunate the guy who made it kind of dipped because the it was incredible, the paint and everything. So, Spiral Studios, obviously it's a more high end figure. Um, if you want it, I'd get it now because or when it pre orders pop up because uh, it's 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 already gonna be expensive. And <laughs> <Yeah>. The <laughs> well, aftermarket price isn't gonna be. What's out. everybody's thoughts on the color scheme for it? Because that's been something I've been thinking about with a little bit. Like the sculpt is incredible, like it, hands down correct best version of like the toy i've ever seen the color bugs the crap out of me though i haven't seen anything something seems off about it just it what i'm looks looking fine at. to me personally yeah no it's it the color is a bit drab so um we do have 15 minutes it, left it can't so. be as drab as that x plus one though that like kind of poo brown <laughs> oh the way uh, poo brown, yeah but, yeah with the uh, blue fins or something i was like good lord what is that uh, so right. there's also uh mini items by cast so cast is like a i think it's i don't know if it's part of bandai but they they did a few gods of 1998 items they they do like little props from like godzilla like they didn't they made a replica uh metal pipe from Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla, you know the smoking pipe made the space titanium. I gotta get uh, me one of those. Yeah, so they made a mini Godzilla baby egg replica. They made a, a replica of Godzilla's footprint. They made a a little model of Godzilla walking through the city. Um, those are kind of more expensive, but they're smaller pieces. Um, and then Marmot released a Safubi set of Godzilla '98 and two of his babies. Which is, I, th I believe, is the only Safubi of Godzilla '98 that exists. Um, there was some, pl I think Bandai made like a plushy set of Godzilla '98. They made a few like chibi toys. They made a few figurines over the years. They made one Zilla toy, and of course, YMSF, very recently, like literally like last month, just released a Zilla six-inch uh, figure for the first final toy, and Bandai. <laughs> God, this is so long-winded. Bandai just released a poll and for what they're going to make for the next 6-inch uh, movie monster 
toy for the Godzilla line, and Zilla is in that pole. So, and that's also specifically the one for the um, Godzilla store exclusive, I believe. Right. So, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if, like I said, we have 15 minutes here, so we're just kind of doing a lightning round right now. Mm-hmm. So, I got another one to add if you want. Oh, of course. Right. Yeah, so I got a uh, Godzilla '98 mask here. <laughs> this is oh, that, um, yeah. odd. They made it's the arms so... too, right? <laughs> but where's the bodysuit? Uh, I don't know where the bodysuit. That's in our. That's in our special room. <laughs> that's in our special. That's our special room. The special room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Telling them the yeah, secret. That, does, that doesn't sound creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. Yeah, the uh, brand, I have no idea because the inside of it, it just says Toho 98 and then made in China. Yeah, I, I if forgot you put that those. on, Nick, if you put that on and you go near your dog, what will he do? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> I can't see this. Oh, he put, he actually he doing put this? his ears down. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 did not like that. Yeah. I think he knows dad's in there, though. So. Yeah. Oh my god. All right, so we got 13 minutes left and I did have a fun little segment for Jonathan that I wanted to do. I don't know if it'll piss a him lightning off. Lightning round? Yeah, I don't know if it'll <laughs> piss him off or he'll think it's funny, but I'll throw him in there anyway. And we'll see what happens. So Jonathan's notoriety has spread far outside the regular toy and Godzilla circles. What does he think of these images we've randomly stumbled upon on the web? So he's seen he's seen these before, but I want a first hand reaction to them. Set that osmosis. To <laughs> yeah. So Jones mem thing that you. Yeah. So <laughs> here's a here's a text message that I found on a on a Instagram page called Creamy Meme. <laughs> it's a text message of a bunch of Osmosis Jones prototypes. Um, the text message me- reads. You, you meet a girl at the club, and this is in her house. What do you do? And the other text message just says, commit to her. And this is a picture of Jonathan's collection. Yes. I say. Okay. <laughs> uh, so what do you think of that? Well, it made me laugh. I was like, what, what does that have to do with, with, you know, what they're trying to say? It's, it's um, I, I didn't, when you showed that to me years ago, didn't I tell you that story when, where that photo was taken, it was like, I was in a very small apartment and I had this girl knock on my door. She lived in the building. I knew her from the gym and she lived with her boyfriend and she came in and <laughs> this is going to be a little X rated. She, <laughs> oh, she, God. she came in and she sat down beside me and, and I don't know she had a beer with her and she asked me if I want, I don't like beer, but I didn't drink it. And then we were talking and then she like 20 minutes later, she abruptly left. And it was like, kind of like, you know, you're, you're kind of finishing off a meal and just as you're drinking your last drink, she's already out the door. And, and I bumped into her again later and she said, look, I'm, I'm really sorry. But she said, seeing a grown man with all those toys, got me really <laughs> hot. And oh I my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, that, you know, that, that was a true, true story. And I was like, I didn't see that coming, but, um, you know, that was interesting because, believe it or not, she later came back to me and said, listen, do you do you want to, like, basically stand in the clo- in, in the closet in our in our bedroom and watch oh my me God. have sex with my boyfriend? Jesus Christ. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm going to have to stop you here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the greatest episode. <laughs> All right. Well, you wanted to talk memes. I don't know. It's, it's uh... All right. So this next one, I don't know if. I don't know if you should be offended by this next one. Really? So, so this one was, I think I, I might've saw on Reddit or something. So, cause people post like memes and screenshots from 4chan. I thought which, you were going to ask me about that question about those two guys that made that group. We hate Jonathan. <laughs> no, maybe another time. So, I mean, ah, Jonathan doesn't know what 4chan is. Uh, 4chan is like an anonymous image board. Uh, it doesn't have the best, <laughs> reputation but once someone alerted me to these photos being posted and i was like i think these are jonathan's photos so i'll post the screenshot it is a long image board showing a bunch of jonathan's photos and it shows one reply and it's a person saying 
Who the fuck likes Osmosis Jones this much? Hmm. <laughs> 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 and it was it was Mike. Uh, actually, there's there's a couple of other dudes that seem to be more into osmosis than me, even if that's possible. But um, oh, but it, so the person that posted it claimed it was his photos, and he says, "Pop figures are shit." But here's my osmosis Jones collection, <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> it almost sounds like something I may have said, but I, I don't think that was me. <laughs> I don't think you were on fortune, dude. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, that would be misfortune for me. Oh my god! So I think that's about it for tonight. Um, we're really we glad to have minutes. you on. <laughs> what? Oh, we have eight we still minutes. Have eight minutes. <laughs> oh my god, bro! Nah, I know I you want to hear more stories. I about think we that should be wrapping it up pretty soon, though. Jonathan, uh, if we, um, no offense, if we get you on a subject, this is going to be an, another. We need like another twenty minutes at least. <laughs> yeah, we need to do a part two episode at some point. <laughs> Oh my god! I, I think we I think we mostly tackled or at least touched upon most of the toys. Obviously, there's a whole like sea of merchandise, mm-hmm. which I think is a bit different. Yeah, but um, I think for like the actual toys themselves, we we covered most of our bases. Right, and of course we I mean for the Trend Masters protos, we really only touched scratch the surface. Yeah. So and that's uh, before we log off. Jonathan, um, I know there's something that you want to self-promo, and that is the Trendmasters prototype Facebook page. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, you guys can come and check out the Trendmasters prototype toys group, and you'll see And there, there's going to be two groups now, and, and the, the one that's active, it's got the word Redux in brackets because I had to reboot the group in September yeah, just Mark- after the- Mark Wahlberg, fandom, or no? Who the fuck? No, Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Mark Wahlberg. Good. And Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. Yeah. Oh so, God. yeah, he, I, I had to reboot the group two weeks after the seven-year anniversary, which is so ridiculous. It, you know, it's so stupid because Facebook says, um, "Okay, Jonathan, we'll need you to verify your identity." So I, I had to send a picture of my driver's license and my email address. They're like, "Okay, great, we got it. You know, we'll get back to you in 24 hours." Well, that was like September 18th, and here we are today. I never heard from those fuckers again. <laughs> all right, so, very cool. I, I don't, I, it's all bullshit. I have no. I mean, everything's bots, right? So, right. you know, well, there's there's no phone number. There's nothing like what the hell happened to my profile. So yeah, it's like uh, I had to I had to start from scratch. Fuck again. Zuckerberg. Um, well, so we say fuck too. Um, you know what his nickname I gave him is for Zuckerberg? What? Mark Zuckerberg, Cuckerberg. Dude, you, you'd think that he'd like the Trend Masters stuff because he's a fucking lizard himself. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we had a great episode with you, Jonathan. Thank you for coming in with us, and uh, thank you for your long, long Winded stories. Answers. Yes. Dude. Well, I, 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 listen, I, I always said every, every toy tells a story, right? So... Um, we only just lightly touched the surface. There, that might be a good title for the episode. <laughs> Every toy What's has it? a story. Yeah, the toy sure. Story. You can you can use that. <laughs> you know, we could sell that to Reaction when they come yeah, knocking. There on we the go. Door, asking to make copies of the Cyber Toy Story. Can we trademark that? No, Toy Story. No, we can't trademark that. <laughs> All right, and uh, <laughs> well, yeah, sure, well, we could we could call it Pix Art. There we go. <laughs> well, we'll. Uh, We'll we'll see if we can get you in contact with Brian. Maybe maybe you guys can be friends. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if it was the dude I went to high school with? Who knows? <laughs> dude, he look. moved to the U.S. and he'd be around my age. The world, I mean, dude, the world's pretty small. You never know. It is six degrees of six degrees of separation. Exactly. Yeah, d- look, dude, like you know me. I know someone that's worked with Kanye. Kanye's met Trump. Uh, Trump has met the Queen, and I think the Queen met has Trump. met Hitler. So, and I met Trump in ninety. Oh, you did! I forgot about yeah. that. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, we can't talk about our lives. We'll be here forever. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it was nice talking to you, Jonathan. It was nice. I'm glad you guys met uh, David too. Who's Hello, never that's to me. Before. And if you guys want to know more about the toys. Join the Trend Masters Facebook group. And, you know, who knows? Well, Maybe Trend Masters Prototype Toys Redux. 
Right. And Gotta be clear on that. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll finally do that Trend Masters book we've been talking about. That's all. Oh, that's right, huh? That would be cool. <laughs> yeah. We've been talking about it for five years. A coffee table book, and then we'll do like Kramer did on Seinfeld. And if you don't have a coffee table, it the book becomes a coffee table. <laughs> You, know, you have the little fold out legs <laughs> that would work oh, and oh yeah it would, and it would come with like a like a resin prototype each book <laughs> so we'd, we'd only make like five books what if we shred the toys and turn them into the books oh boy don't, not do that. That don't destroy them All right. you're already you're already getting dressed and you're in the car as you're just taking off your <laughs> ll cool j headset all right that was episode four of no croissant it was nice speaking with you guys, and uh, we'll sign off right here. All right. Take her slow, but take her. <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut off right there. All right. <laughs>